So today I'm going to talk to you about how you can take some of the ugliest code, uh, terrible code you can find, uh, put it into your process, and still somehow survive. Uh, so untrusted code is everywhere, uh, with plugins, extensions, libraries, and somehow we still need to run it. How do we do this? The security community has come up with all kinds of different approaches to handle such untrusted code, uh, one of which is software sandboxing. In this talk, I will be focusing on intra-process sandboxing. This is where you can take a bunch of different bits of code, put them into sandboxes of their own, and these sandboxes can only communicate or work with their environment through a series of trusted APIs. Uh, and indeed, they cannot affect the environment in any other way. Uh, here, the environment refers both to the host process, the other sandboxes in the same process, and the outside world. The primary goal with this, of course, uh, is safety. Secondary but still important goals include performance and ease of use. And in the space of the web, this is where WebAssembly comes in. Uh, people would like to compile all kinds of code from all different languages and still be able to run it in your browser. But this code is generally untrusted. It's the web, after all. And thus, WebAssembly was born. WebAssembly is intended to be safe for sandboxing. Indeed, it promises lightweight, safe, and fast execution of untrusted code on the web. But notice, none of those properties are necessarily web-specific. We would like to do this beyond the web, too. And indeed, many groups have recognized this, and with things such as WASI, uh, WebAssembly has now been used beyond the web, too. However, these promises of safety are only as safe as the implementation. And this is where our work comes in. Our contributions are that we explore two distinct techniques to achieve provably safe sandboxing. The first is a formally verified sandboxing compiler where you get machine-checked proofs of safety. The second, our WASM, provides competitive performance with provable safety without the tedium of writing formal proofs. Oops, sorry. Uh, I did mention formal verification, so a very brief tangent. Formal verification provides mathematically strong guarantees about software. Using tools like FSTAR, Daphne, Lean, and so on, we can specify properties as pre and post conditions and dependent types and such, uh, and then write proofs about the code. These proofs are checked by the machine, and these proofs look like we write lemmas and then insert assertions into the code. These assertions are checked statically at verification time rather than the normal assertions you're used to in most programming languages, which are run at runtime. Since they're checked statically, these assertions hold for any possible inputs to your software. You may have heard of some traditional verified compilers, such as with CompCert. A traditional verified compiler shows that the output code's behavior is equivalent to the behavior of the input code. Unfortunately, this means that it's restricted to safe input code turning into safe machine code. And indeed, it says nothing about unsafe or malicious input code. With a sandboxing compiler, what we would like to do is have safe code become safe, uh, stay safe, and unsafe or malicious code become safe somehow. And this is where WeWASM comes in. Our top-level theorem statement, written in simplified form here, looks a bit like this. I don't expect you to read that. Written in simpler English, if we start the program, the compiled code, at any OK state, if we run it for any number of steps, we should still remain in an OK state. What does this OK mean? OK means that we only perform explicitly allowed behavior. Since we're performing an allow list of behaviors, this completely prevents things like out-of-bound memory accesses, writing to read-only memory, for example, or making calls to unsafe APIs or arbitrary system calls and so on. Thus, sandboxing is guaranteed this way. What does a proof of such a theorem look like? Well, it looks a bit like that. It's about 3,500 lines of code and proof, and this is just for the sandboxing pass. To set up the infrastructure and the environment and getting all the way to having compilable, runnable code, uh, it took about 15,000 lines of code. Clearly, this takes a lot of effort. So uh, 
at a high level, what does this proof look like? We first start off with coarse grain control flow integrity. This allows us to introduce runtime software fault isolation checks that cannot be bypassed. With these software fault isolation checks, we ensure that the linear memory in WebAssembly, the tables and so on, are handled correctly. Uh, the checks make sure that all accesses stay within a statically sized sandbox. But of course, this takes a lot of effort, and this is where our WASM comes in. It would be witchcraft if we could provide these guarantees without the tedium of formal proofs. Our insight here is that if you lift untrusted code to a type or memory safe language, then compile that to machine code, that compiled machine code is imbued with the properties, the safety properties that the type or memory safe language had. In the case of our WASM, we specifically pick Rust. We pick Rust since it provides predictable performance it does not have a garbage collector. For those who are aware, we explicitly, we explicitly stay in the safe subset of Rust, which means we forbid unsafe behavior. The RWASM sandboxing, thus, the safety derives directly from the type safety and memory safety of Rust. The SFI checks still remain runtime checks, However, we can now rely upon the optimizations provided by the Rust compiler. This means that superfluous or unnecessary checks are completely optimized away. Since we're lifting to a higher level language, we can actually experiment with different ideas. Uh, in the case of our WASM, we support both static and dynamically sized sandboxes. And indeed, other extensions can be provided easily. This includes things like inline reference monitors that you can use to in implement tracers and sanitizers. And the really fun part is that these get optimized in tandem with the code that you're producing, since the optimizer gets both the inline reference monitor and the code and is able to optimize that together. What does this sort of RWASM compilation look like? Let's take a toy example where we're adding a bunch of numbers together, uh, specifically numbers one to n. I don't expect you to read that WebAssembly code. Uh, the lifter, our WASM, takes that code and performs almost a line-by-line -line translation. This introduces a whole bunch of abstractions. And indeed, naive compilation of this to machine code would lead to extremely inefficient code. However, the optimizer can kick in and is able to blast away all of those abstractions that are introduced and is able to produce highly optimized code. So how does this perform in practice? We show that WeWASM and RWASM are quite competitive with other compilers. In this graph, on the x-axis, we have a collection of WebAssembly runtimes uh, including interpreters and compilers. I've highlighted WeWASM and RWASM there. These are sorted by median performance on a series of standard be WASM benchmarks. On the y-axis, we have normalized slowdown on a log scale. Uh, this is normalized against pure native execution, where you do not even include WebAssembly. Of course, the interpreters are kind of slow. And since WeWASM is a compiler, it is able to outperform the interpreters consistently on every single benchmark. However, WeWASM is slower than all the other compilers. Our WASM itself trades blows back and forth with each benchmark. Uh, and indeed, for some of the longer running benchmarks, it can sometimes be even two times as fast as even the fastest on the median, which is the one on the right, WABM. So how did, uh, let's also look at the trade-offs between WeWASM and RWASM qualitatively. For the trusted computing base, uh, WeWASM is formally verified with a traditional TCB, which includes things like the verification language that we used, F star, and the trusted printer, and so on. In contrast, our WASM, since we're performing a lifting to 
uh, high-level code, we get portability across architectures for free, which we wouldn't get in WeWasm since we're directly talking about machine code. And with Rust optimization, we get better execution speed with our WASM. However, if we would like to extend the properties that we prove, then WeWASM is much better suited since it is written in a verification-oriented language. However, our WASM is better suited for runtime extensions, as I talked about before. With a high-level language, we do not need to worry about how it might, for example, mess with the register allocator if we introduce an inline reference monitor. In terms of effort, our WASM was significantly easier to work on, both for initial development as well as ongoing maintenance. In conclusion, in this work, we have explored two concrete compelling points in the design space for implementing provably safe sandboxing with WebAssembly. We have shown that high performance and strong safety are not mutually exclusive goals. And indeed, there is a wide space that's interesting and rich and open for further exploration. All of our code is open source. Uh, thank you.